Who are you? Welcome. You have been selected to be a part of something of global importance for a mission that only you can accomplish. You've been selected and not randomly. You are seeing this for a reason. It's not a mistake that you're watching this right now. I'm Pastor Dan. Stay tuned to find out why you've been picked out to watch this right here and right now. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for this message. I ask right now that your voice would be the one that's heard today through this message, that it would impact all of our lives, that we would clearly see the path forward that you have for us and our purpose to fulfill our mission here on the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to be an agent of change. You are to interact with everyone around you and bring hope where there is despair, faith where there is no faith, light where there is darkness, and love where there is hate. You will be given abilities beyond your natural talent supernatural abilities that will allow you to see things that cannot be seen with natural eyes, sense things that others cannot, discern things beyond natural understanding, and to endure things that others could not endure. You have been selected because of your unique set of talents and abilities that will be enhanced through supernatural means. No one else can do what you can do. No one else can be who you can be, and no one else can achieve what you can achieve. Your value to the mission is beyond your understanding. Say yes, and your life will change forever. You will be required to make sacrifices. However, the reward will more than make up for the sacrifices. This is the mission briefing. I received this briefing and the opportunity to join the mission over 40 years ago, and I've never looked back. And if you commit wholeheartedly to the mission, neither will you. This mission is given straight from the King. I am simply his messenger delivering this message to you. It's an honor and a privilege to be selected to be part of this global mission, and it's not to be taken lightly as it comes with a great deal of responsibility and accountability. Today we're talking about the mission that comes with making the decision to follow Jesus. And it is all of the things that I have just presented to you and more. It is truly a mission to save the world. <laughs> and you can be a part of it in a greater way than you can possibly imagine. You and I both know something that we may or may not want to admit, and that is that there are people all around us every day that are lost, struggling, hurting, and need help, whether they know it or not, and whether they want to admit it or not. The thing about that is you can do something about it, and I can do something about it, and we should do something about it. This is the core or the heart of the mission. It's to deliver the message of faith, hope, and love, not just by words, but also by actions. In James chapter 2, verses 14 to 17 in the Bible, it says, What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? 
In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. So I said that this is the core or the heart of our mission. However, God also has a unique and special way for each one of us to accomplish this mission. And that is revealed to us by God himself through various means as we get to know God and grow in our faith and relationship with him. Think about it this way. In a military operation, there is one team and one purpose. However, within that team, there are people with specialties, people with unique skill sets. One person might be the team leader. One of them might be the driver. One might be a negotiator. One might be a munitions expert. And one might be the communications person with the radio equipment. Now, they're all united in purpose. However, they all have different parts to play to accomplish the overall mission. And they're all important. The Bible puts it like this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 31. It says, Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, oh, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. And if the ear should say, Oh, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It would not, for that reason, stop being a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, oh, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honourable, we treat with special honour. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honour to the parts that lacked it. So that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. Now, you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. So there is a whole lot to unpack there. I know that was, a, that was quite a long scripture to go through. And I encourage you during the week to read and reread that passage of scripture and let God speak to you through it. 
you can be a part of this body and part of this mission. All you have to do is say yes and start fulfilling the heart of the mission in the best way you know how. The unique way that it plays out in your life will become clear as you just start doing what you can in the best way you know how. If you start listening to people and try to be an, an ear in the body, but you can't let people finish a sentence without interrupting them, well that's fine. It just means that you're probably not an ear. <laughs> I say that figuratively, but to be more clear and practical as some examples, if you try to be a singer and God has created you tone deaf, chances are you're probably not a singer. <laughs> and if, if you have a short temper and very low patience, you're probably not a kids church leader because they require a lot of patience. <laughs> that is seriously absolutely fine because there are other people who are called to fulfill the mission and purpose through that area in their lives. Let me rem remind you at this point, you did not end up here and now watching this message by accident. You are watching this right now because it's time for you to accept your mission. And if you have already started your mission, consider this an encouragement and a reminder of why you are doing this. You are playing a part in saving the world one person at a time. God has a plan and a purpose for you. You are being called right now and will continue to be called for the rest of your life to fulfill your purpose through the core mission. You might be looking for purpose in life or wondering why you're here or thinking it's all meaningless and doesn't matter. Well, here is your purpose to fulfill your mission. This is why you're here to start or continue your mission. This is the meaning to live for a cause that's bigger, much bigger than you or I. And this is why it matters, because you are called to help save the world. Only you can do what you are being called to do. Don't let the opportunity pass you by, because every moment that you aren't fulfilling this mission is a moment that passes by without meaning and purpose. You want in? Well, here's how. Pray this with me. God, I hear you calling me right now. I know I don't deserve to be given this honor, but I believe that you love me and that Jesus died and came back to life so that I could be forgiven and have this opportunity. Come into my life in a powerful way to help me to accomplish my purpose through the core mission of spreading faith, hope, and love. Amen. If you prayed that for the first time, or maybe you've prayed something similar in the past, but this is a recommitment to your mission and the purpose, I would love for you to join us on our live Zoom Connect this week to find out more details about your mission and your purpose. You'll find out details about our live Zoom Connect on our website, or if you're not able to join us there, please contact us through our online form. Uh, which is on our website also, uh, or through email, or direct message us on our socials. Worship is coming up right now, so stick around for that. Thank you so much for joining us. Have an awesome week living out the mission that God has given you. God bless you. God's always been there No matter the season or what's in your way Down on your luck and nowhere to turn 
God to have your side, so don't be afraid. He's always near us, He's always around. He's by our side, He's by our side, holding and helping and cheering us on. We've just got to do one little thing And that's believe that He is the King His Son came to earth, died on the cross Just for us, just for us He's always near us, He's always around He's by our side, He's by our side Holding and helping and cheering us on He's always near us, He's always around He's by our side, He's by our side Holding and helping and cheering us on going and don't give up he hears your pleas he hears your prayer he's by our side no matter the time so just keep believing in God and his son there's no better way to feel his love just open your heart up and see what is done saved us from ourselves and all this sin done I know it's hard I know that it hurts but this too shall pass with better to come so don't let this world get the better of you deep down you know there's better to come so don't give up and don't give in he's always near us he's always around he's by our side he's by our side he's holding and helping and cheering us on he's always near us He's always around He's by our side He's by our side Holding and helping and cheering us on You know that He'll win with the greatest gift The greatest love It's all yours now It's all yours now it's all yours now, it's all yours now. Yes, the Spirit was moving the water, Spirit come move over us, come rest on us, come rest on us, as the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us, come rest on us, come rest on us, come now, Spirit when you move you make my heart you're here and I know you are moving I'm here and I know you will feel me Come down Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound When you feel the room You're here and I know you are moving I'm here and I know you will feel me
you're all we want. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice Let all the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice and trembles at his voice how great is our God sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great how great is our God And age to age He stands And time is in His hands Beginning and the end Beginning and the end The Godhead three in one Father, Spirit, Son The Lion and the Lamb The Lion and the Lamb How great is our God me how great is our God and all will see how great how great is our God how great is our God sing with me how our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. His name above all names, He is worthy of all 
praise My heart will sing How great is our God His name above all names He is worthy of all praise My heart will sing How great is our God How great is our God Sing with me How great is our God and all will see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Oh, how great is He, the name above all names. Is worthy to be praised. There's no name above your name. Sing it one more time. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great. Is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God.